All right, next up, we're going to uh, actually trim these surfaces so that you have just floor plates. Um, I guess uh, the thing that I want to mention, though, is that it's a little funky doing this sometimes because you have um, curved intersections that you can solve for. You have um, subtractions you can do. You have B reps, which are boundary representations of volumes, but B reps can sometimes be represented as surfaces. Um, so there are a whole bunch of different things that you can do. It's just that some of them are a little bit heavier in terms of the data, right? Meaning like some of them are creating a lot of extra data that you don't need. Um, so the way that I like to do something like this is to actually solve for an intersection and create a new curve to create a new surface. For me, I found it to be like the simplest way to, to do this. So when you go to um, intersect and you go to uh, physical, you'll see that there are like all these different ways of testing things. You can test B rep, B rep, you can test B rep curve, surface curve, surface split, uh, curve, curve, curve self, multiple curves. All these things are going to return a type of geometry that solves for an intersection of two things. So if you have two curves that are crossing, which is really hard to do if they're skewed curves, um, you can get a point at exactly where they intersect or a field of points where many lines are intersecting. Um, so what I like to use for this is B-Rep, B-Rep. Um, it takes two, I mean, it's, it's basically exactly what you're seeing in the icon, which is exactly what we've built. We've built a cylindrical object, but for us it's rectangular. Um, and then we have these flat surfaces that are cutting through it, and we want to get a curve that shows me exactly where it's intersecting it so that I can create a new floor plate that matches that intersection. Um, so I f do forget whether or not, um, and I, I always forget this every time, but whether or not the surfaces immediately get considered as B reps when you plug it in. So we'll try. So we're going to solve for um, the collection of generic surfaces on the first one, and then we're going to test against the resulting loft surfaces for that. So we plug that in. And what we get, thankfully, is a set of curves. You guys can see them right there. So if I go um, into my definition and I turn all this extra stuff off, all of this extra stuff off, we get four curves. Those four curves are twisting like our tower is. And then you, no, not loft, um, you just go to, well, actually, you could just measure the area right here if you want without creating um, anything. So you can go into area and test uh, what the area of each of those curves is, which is that. They're slightly different. Why? Huh? Because of the rotation, yeah. As you twist something, it's like having a rubber band like this, right? There's a certain area between the four sides of this rubber band, but if I twist it like this, that area gets smaller, right? Because it's getting closer to itself. Um, so that's why there's a minor difference. Um, anyway, so we, we can basically plug this same information in to test whether or not it is, ten, it is less than 10,000 square feet. So um, let me flatten this list and uh, I don't need this merge anymore. I actually don't even need this area anymore because this one takes its place. Um, so I'm going to plug in this into mass addition. And then, uh, so that's already testing whether or not it is smaller than 10,000. Um, and the only thing I have to do differently now is plug in the, the object that I want to render a certain color if or when my building is, is greater than or less than 10,000 square feet. So um, right now, it is the old surfaces that I had. I don't want that. Instead, I need to pick either surfaces to render as a color or maybe a volume. So for me, what I want to do is actually show my building as a certain color, mm -hmm. the whole building itself, when the floor plates, when the floor plates themselves are a certain um, square footage in, in uh, combination. So I'm going to plug this into dispatch and turn these two back on. So now you can see that it's testing. Let me turn on my curves too. Maybe. And uh, 
I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something just so this is kind of a little visual trick. Um, when you're using mesh colors, there is no shading. It's just that color, so you can't see the geometry. So what I like to do, just so I can see it, is pop on a uh, deconstruct B rip, and then um, put on curves on the edges piece and then hide the deconstruct beer up so I can hide this and I can still see like the edges so that helps with the visibility um, so now I can actually go through the process of changing my square footage and testing it so I can go a little over so if I accidentally go over 10,000 square feet but I, I kind of like like the footprint at the bottom and I want to change the size a little bit more I can change the rotation and tighten it up so that it gets within it. Pretty sharp, right? So anyway, um, what I'd like you to do is get to this point. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of time to catch up. What we're doing here is uh, closing up the ideas that we have there as um, square foot analysis. Okay, so there's our three ideas. It's a much cleaner definition now. Um, it functions the way I want it to function. So no matter what form that thing takes, the, the floors are always going to be what they are. All right, I'll come around and troubleshoot if you need me to.